one, two, three, one, four, five, six, seven. What's setologs? Okay. Is that, is that, is that, we can do Go that on then, or, yeah, a setologue. A setologue. Yeah. Um, the topic is the motion is. Anyone want to put the motion for? <laughs> um, what's base base reality? What is base reality? Yeah. Uh, today I'll be Mr. Speaker. This is the mic. This is the panel. Yeah. So we have. You can all introduce yourselves. Because I kind of forgot. Sarah. Dun dun dun. Another intro. Nick. Yeah. 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 All right. Who's starting off? What's base reality? But what's base reality? What's base reality to me? Yeah. It's our the best guess of our very uh, hard working brains. Which is? <laughs> what is the best guess of our hard working brains? It's the reality of constructs for itself. So base reality is this as we perceive it. It's not holographic. It's it's this. This dimensional material reality oh, is... Oh, you mean like the reality outside of my perception and where no. I think it is? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that's what I mean by... Ba or that's what I think we mean by base reality. Like is base outside reality of... the lowest form of consciousness can go before it's happening? No, no. It, base reality is like core ultimate reality. Okay. It's like outside of our perceptual, cultural, you know, frameworks. Like what's really there. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That's, that's interesting. That's that a kind of... complicated one, isn't it? Yeah. Because I guess that uh, touches the core of all questions. Yeah. But um, if I had to put my money on something, I would uh, be a materialistic at this point. Yeah. So this is... This plus our scientific knowledge as it is at the moment is approximating quite closely. I think that this and the scientific knowledge that we have so far explains a little bit of that. Yeah. It's very far from being complete or explaining yeah. reality as it is or even consciousness or things, you know, bottom of the ocean, right? So it's but very limited as it is. How do you but engage with quantum, quantum entanglement, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, so non-local consciousness? So that's the bit that I think that our knowledge is still limited, right? And right. we have like these frameworks, these conceptual frameworks that we're very used to. And so far, it worked very well in explaining almost everything, right? At least like the most common phenomena that are shared between, you know, uh, individual subjective exp experiences, if you may. But I think that uh, to, in to understand entanglement, you need to get out of this conceptual uh, framework. But it doesn't need it doesn't mean that the conceptual framework is wrong to start with. It just needs that it, need it just means that it needs to be expanded to include other things that we haven't considered yet. Right. Okay. So. Quite a conservative view yeah. here. Yeah. I, w I want yeah. someone to oppose that conservative view now. Yeah. 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 That's 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 a sort of commonsensical. It is what it is. There's a lot we don't know. Well, it depends how you measure. Well, that's also that's it depends exactly how you measure the highest reality. If you if you use a microscope, you'll see. Um, you, you look down to the bottom of molecules and atoms, you will see planets and constellations and the outermost of the universe. And if you use your, your sense, you would get something else. The reality is what you measure it to be and how you measure it. Whatever tool you use, you'll be using it specifically to measure so it's what you want to get. It's not normal. Yeah, it's fluid, it's whatever you kind of want it to be, it's, baby. So really, so really, uh, 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 assuming it's that there's this, the idea of humanity so far has sort of been this assumption that there's an objective reality in which we're interacting with each other. But with that, you're sort of saying that the more you, the, you can use your belief system to control the reality in which, and that's really saying that there's a choice, which is kind of quite an interesting point, because if you've gone on so long, that's kind of opposed to the scientific view of there. It's, it's set, it works within these boundaries, I mean, and there's a limitation. Why, why is it idealistic, right? It's a, well, I, I'd say it's opposed because it's like, it's, it's got, it's a, your, your, well, the scientific view is more quantified. It's something that ha can have limits, right? It's a limited thing, whereas if you choose it, that is opposing that, because it's saying you're in control, and it's, as far as you can go with any idea of thought or concept or... But, but, but you see, we're not, not presenting a theory control, right? in, I'm not presenting in, a theory. in the opposite, right? I'm not presenting an opposite theory, I'm just comparing the two that you And that's presented. exactly what takes me back to materialism, because, you know, at least there's quantifiable measurements of things, right? And, you know, for as much as we can go uh, uh, 
with science, we seem to agree in general laws, right? So that for me at yeah. least tries to explain yeah. something. Yeah. But if you then go and deny that and don't present something else, but I have trouble denies that. But the, right? the, 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 this is a, 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 another thing that kind of the scientists community have much more, which is like you can't um, when you identify a problem, you can't you they they sort of go well okay well what is it then? Yeah. Like, just because you know how to diagnose something, it doesn't mean you also have to cure it. I mean that's that's a, but so I'm not saying. But it's would you say that the gift theory is opposed to? Like I'm not saying that. I don't think it's no, opposed. No, I think no, it's no. more. I, I, I tend to think like I think opposed, but they are they are. I mean, light. No, you can science. measure light as a wave or a particle. I mean, none of them. Neither of them are right. Yeah. Neither of them are wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just the way you measure light. If you want to measure but, light in a certain that's... way to get to, to see it as a, as a wave, you'll yeah. see a wave. If you want to measure it as a particle, you see a particle. So you become. You become part of the like experiment. You, can never, you can't remove yourself. You can from never the, experience reality outside of your own consciousness. It's and not, well, it's, like, your it's like being in a box and trying to see what's yeah. outside the box. It's like it's kind of yeah, yeah. And, uh, and point of view, right? There is like a reality outside of you, and you only learn it and then uh, and come in contact with it through right. your limited senses, and therefore it's never complete. I mean, okay, yeah, but for, to extrapolate what you're saying, you're you're saying that the scientific perspective, the material scientific perspective. Just one perspective, and there are other perspectives which are potentially equally valid, right? I mean, ultraviolet light, you, you, you can't see it before, you can't measure it, you can't see it when it makes you light, but you know what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can't measure yet, or we haven't measured yeah, therefore. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it it's completely outside yet, or it's completely. I believe that science will be able to explain exactly. a lot of things that is not able to, exp to explain now and people may interpret it as mystic because it's still not... But we need to experiment, we need yeah. to carry on trying to yeah. explore what face reality is. And that's and what, that's what, what, what it is, it's trying to figure out what it is. So you're stuck in the loop. Reality is where you try to figure out what it is and then you're building it and you create it. They're the, they're the real philosophers by the way, those are the real philosophers over there. Yeah. The man in tight shirts. This really shows that, you know, our framework <laughs> is very incomplete. That's very good, uh, very good uh, proof sorry. that our framework is incomplete, right? But it's not disagreeing with what, what, you know, we know that a macroscopic level, it still behaves like that, right? On a microscopic level, we don't understand it as well because we still don't have that framework. It's still, it's a baby, right, for science. It's just, you know, Einstein first touched on it, right? So it's really sort of, we can understand as much as we can understand, like that's... Oh, but yes, her, okay. her proposition at her base is like everything in reality can be ultimately be measurable. It's just that yeah. for some things we can't measure yet, yeah, right? Yeah. And I don't know where I stand on that because we haven't found a tool to get back Yeah, to I kind of like to think, oh, I don't know if I agree with it. I just don't know if there are everything can be ultimately measured. And maybe, can, like for instance, if consciousness is what some people say, it's not vocal, it's like vibrational, it has, it's informational. Can, can all qualitative things be measured? Like in the pure qualia? No. no. So for instance, like you, have to, you have to flip me, into quantity, science, right? For me, that's where exactly where science doesn't work anymore as right. it is right now. It's all based on objectivity. That's exactly. like what the main work. Exactly. But you cannot so describe right. experience in terms of how it is subjectively. Yeah. But for because me, we that's don't have to, an to measure it ultimately. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. When yeah. We don't I don't know, know if it's possible. Like, if you take a relationship about, between two lovers and they're into subjective experience, that into subjective experience is real. It's not fake. It's something that happens to... Yeah, biologically, yeah, it does. Not just, Not, biologically. <laughs> Not just biologically, but emotionally, Sometimes. spiritually, right? <laughs> yeah. Two lovers Not, it's hard, hard to get have it these up. emotional, spiritual connections with each other. <clears throat> How do you measure them? How do you measure them? So, you know, right now you're putting this within the framework of science and what I'm saying exactly is that we need to expand that. that this is not complete. Our framework like, of measurable limit, right? things no, is not complete, right? Because what I know, like, I know that biologically things happen to you, then I don't know how to integrate that into a feeling, and obviously if I don't know how to integrate that, okay, I don't no, have no. A, made to, a way to measure it. And I don't think we will measure it as we measure any uh, biological quantity. It's not, you know, 
measuring it is not the right word because right. it's it comes down to scientific Experience. Experience. But framework. Let's say, exactly, that's the thing, right? If, let's say that we map we manage to understand the brain perfectly and we can map like that, every yeah. single feeling that you have or everything that you feel in uh, in that moment when you're in a couple or whatever. That still doesn't explain the experience in itself. No, but that's like not the experience, but like doesn't explain the subjectivity of it. It doesn't explain this other realm of uh, They've been like feeling the feeling or like uh, having the thoughts, well, which is the same of like experience. I can, ex I can explain you why we, we yeah. why biologically you see colors. You know, I can tell you about the waves and like how they hit your uh, your eyes and how but, it's processed. But that doesn't explain the experience. Yeah, but I think but I think that you know there's a limit because I don't think the system can fully understand itself because it will always be limited I agree, by the tools I agree. of the system. Yeah. So do you think so, the you numbers know, eventually come to an end? Sorry? Numbers. Do they, do they go to infinity or the numbers eventually? Oh, I don't understand infinity, see? Yeah. I don't but have the potential do framework to work with infinity because as humans don't have that tool, right? You we, can't conceptualize you know, infinity. Limited. We well, can no, conceptualize, you right? but you can't imagine it. Yeah, it's like like you, you can't. Can have I cannot experience it. You can't experience have, it, right? You can conceptualize it because we do, right? Well, we well, yes. intellectually, you can we say can. we experience infinity right now. You can you exactly. Say isn't the present moment yeah. like? Yeah. Isn't the experience yeah. of the present moment as a pure present a moment of infinity? Everything yeah. is related to everything else. But if, like, if you infinitely like, you so, see, for example, like. <laughs> You know, it's like if if we don't look at if we don't look at human experience, and um, there's you know there's there's matter, right? There's a whole chunk of matter that constitutes the universe, and us because there is one line of ent one uh, uh, there is entropy. There's a one directional line that exactly gives us uh, like a sense of. Um, of a of sense of beginning and end, exactly, right? Which conceptually is against the the the, the concept of the infinite, right? But is that something okay, that we're but applying that's, that's ourselves? That's a material prejudice of yours. We have our belief that life does remain to be and not through cycles. Do we not just apply that to the universe and say, yeah. this how this must operate because we experience life as A to B then the universe must go from A to B. What's to say that once it gets to B it doesn't happen? start again. Yeah. And Go what's to say that true, consciousness like... is not negentropic either? Like why Sorry? you know like okay material the material dimension is entropic. Mm -hmm. But what about consciousness being negentropic? What about consciousness is not actually subject to the same rules of matter, right? You you seem to be like way too much of a materialist and matter itself as soon as you blow it up just disappears, right? There is no matter, right? Like as soon as you get to like but the quantum energy, level. But this is, the, my cycle is that. All the whole of the mysticism of the of the, of the world for me doesn't need to be contained in anything else but matter because ma the transformation between matter and energy and the fact that us and uh, you know, all planets, all uh, all stars, everything in the universe is made of the same building blocks. For me, that's the mysticism right there. Like, there's a sense of infinity, like, there's a sense of connectedness with everything in the universe. There's a sense of collective consciousness. All comes down to the fact that we are all made from the same thing. So for me, it's almost like it doesn't need to exist anything outside of this realm, because this realm is, like, fucking incredible anyway. Okay, but still, matter is your kind of Bible. Like you're yeah. you're relying on a base assumption that matter is fundamental, yeah. and that, that's just and a random assumption. You, and, you could say energy is fundamental. You could say consciousness is fundamental, or you could say an X, which is yet to be named, is fundamental. Okay, like it's yeah, exactly. Like why? Okay, we've come from a kind of materialist tradition of thinking, right? But it's so random. Like other traditions don't have like that assumption. Maybe matter seems to be understood to be able to touch and move objects. Yeah. We kind of understand it you know, in the broader sense. It's only what we, as soon as we learn to experience something else and learn to understand something else, then we can start. <laughs> we can start feeling. <laughs> can you see right deep into the eye? Because you'll get very scared. Um, and then. Ah, you, I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, <laughs> that okay? So that we can un we understand matter as a concept in terms of we can measure it. we can measure it in the way through our five senses and we can measure it in a quantifiable way in terms of science or whatever, or whichever way you want it. We can measure lots of ideas in terms of language. Right? That's the way that we're, we're measuring ideas. Right? If, as soon as we can start to understand and measure a different form that isn't matter, yes. you lose matters. The only thing that you that can be relied on for you in your argument. 
is matter, right? That's the thing, that's the base, that's the fundamental everything. So as soon as you can understand something else, you can acknowledge that matter is one of those things, and then there's the thing other that will become soon to us what matter is like. But besides energy and matter and sense? dark matter, I don't Maybe. know about anything else. That's the thing, you know, like I... So as, for you there's a, a, a matter and an antimatter. Mind, there's, a, there's, a, there's the kind of binary of the universe. Yeah, there's matter, there's antimatter, there's energy, there's a cycle of energy and matter, and there's something that we uh, that we know is empty space that somehow has gravity as well, which is the dark matter. And that's so all we know. Where about does your universe, personal right? experience, your subjective experience, doesn't get fit. into all of this? Doesn't fit. My, she has no room for it. Of course I do. Why not? Like, because it's, it's not thing. matter, right? Like, it, but it is because you know, in the end, it's like it, it's an integrated experience from the state of matter, right? You need to have. How? It's not for how is it? Much, much, but it's not matter. No, how is it subjective experience? Reducible to matter. As I said, as I can uh, go, is like well, I have a brain, and my brain has neurotransmitters, and when. I uh, do psychedelics, for example, I scramble these neurotransmitters. But everything else that you've lived so far is also ingrained in the same uh, type of cells that are going to communicate in this experience, right? But so you're all of this. Yeah, but like, no, don't take it literally. Don't explain how your experience is grounded in matter. Your experience in itself is not the matter. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah but it's an emergent property of the matter. It's still in It could be. It could be. But if there is still something assumption. else, it's not only matter that exists. You yes. know, let's, it, let's say that it emerges from matter. It's still not the only thing that exists. Well, it's your experience understanding matter as well as happening. So what's your experience? Well, you well, need, you need experience consciousness and you need matter. You need consciousness to experience matter. There yeah, you exactly. go. So where's, where's they the they need to be equally primordial. Yeah. They are. Yeah, but... She but doesn't accept it. She needs what? emergent, she needs no, emergent no, no, properties. It, you but, have but, to but have emergent you know, properties. You, what, what do you think? No what do you think? Like, if, it, if I take your brain outside yeah, yeah, yeah. of you, you're going to continue to experience Totally, well? totally. Oh, okay, so that's totally. very different. Totally, right? yeah. I, I, I had formative paranormal experiences when I was a kid. But you still needed a brain which, to do that. Which disrupt any feeling that I can privilege matter over anything else. Um, no, I don't think you still do. I don't know if you need a brain. That's where we fundamentally disagree. I don't. I don't think thinking is necessarily all in our brain. Most of our thinking is in our body, right? Yeah, but it's matter you know? communicating. So, do you, so you think consciousness is created within your brain? Because I think the argument that we've got. Yeah, I just that, cannot believe that for a second. So, um, so I, I can discuss that. But my discussion will be still on It'll in be on matter. A, in a scientific in, basis. In, in matter, yeah. Okay. Because what I think is that. Um, so, you know, if, let's say, let, let's say that I don't take the, the assumption that uh, my, my own personal point of view that disagrees with, you know, if I had to say that, no, consciousness is not, uh, your consciousness is not just created in your brain. I would say that, as I said before, you know, like, uh, the universe is a big chunk of matter and it's all the same thing, but it's arranged in different ways, right? Okay. It's the same thing as you having, like, a bunch of wires and you can't do anything with them but if you assemble in a specific way and you plug them into the electricity you're going to experience light so you're going to have from you know you're going to put building blocks together and uh, if they're separated you can't experience the emergent property but if you put them together in a certain way and you plug them in then you have this emergent property right right and this emergent property is uh, more complex and not it's not just the addition of the parts that I have, right? It's not, uh, it's a, com a completely different emergent property that doesn't uh, belong in any individual item, right? Yes. So it's still grounded on matter, all of this, right? What, what I think you guys are saying is that if you plug all of this together, you get light, and light is something else.